Guys, this is a seriously exciting times. I have just finished work and I have enough time to hopefully get nine holes in. The horizon is there. Daylight is getting longer and it means that my practices are going to be able to go up. I'm going to be able to make a lot more videos because it's daylight. And the other day I was in a t-shirt playing golf and it was heaven. So that is all good news. I'm going to talk about what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, which is going to be really exciting. I'm going to be back going back to my old stomping ground when I first learned to play golf. Go go and play around there, do a course vlog for you guys. And obviously go and do a bit of practice because it is a very long course compared to what I'm used to playing. And then also give you a bit of an idea of the journey that I've actually made to actually get to this point. So without further ado, let's play nine holes. Let's get at it. So going to go and play Donington Grove Golf Club, which is a golf club where it all kind of began for my golfing career. So that's why I'm quite excited to go and play there tomorrow and obviously video it and show you guys. But I just want to give you an idea of where I started playing golf and how I got to where I am at the moment. So I didn't actually start playing or didn't pick up a golf club and put it in my hands until I was about 17 years of age. So I was actually really late. A few of my mates were playing um, and basically I just went along for the crack and I ended up really enjoying it. Ended up playing a lot. We all started ending up playing a lot. But then I found myself playing and practicing by myself um, to the point of I just got obsessed with the game basically. But obviously going from there to try and make it a career was obviously not easy. So I finished college, um, got pretty decent grades, but didn't want to go to university um, until I kind of had a, more of an idea of what I wanted to do with my life. So I worked in a bar, pub bar um, in my local town, which was awesome. It was actually really good fun. Um, but it was a lot of late nights, not necessarily that much golf practice. And I was having a few lessons at the time by my coach, Matt, and he so happened to be working at Dynton Grove, and he suggested that there was a job available in the pro shop there. Would I be interested? Um, and obviously I took him up on it. It was, um, it was a complete contrast opposite of whatever I was used to uh, in the pub bar lifestyle, going from finishing work at three in the morning to starting work at six in the morning was obviously a bit of a learning curve. But as soon as I got into it and the summer started hitting, my God, it was uh, it was the best job in the world. And I used to see Matt go and coach a lot um, and he'd be outside all day with different, a um, lot of his clients, a lot of people that he was teaching. And it just looked like the best job in the world. And um, it didn't take long for me to be there to realise actually I wanted to be a golf coach. I was... Um, that was going to be like the main goal. So when I started working at Donington Grove, I wasn't um, I wasn't anywhere near. I could hit a decent ball, but in terms of like the consistency, my God, it was awful. So my first handicap was twenty. So when I was nineteen years of age, I was of handicap of twenty. And obviously, when I started practicing and playing a lot, like forty, fifty hours a week, obviously that came down quite quickly. So I got down to, I think the first year when I was um, at Donington Grove, I went down from 20 to about um, 14 in the first year, maybe a bit lower, something like that. It was the second year that obviously I made quite a big advancement. I went down from about 13 to about 8. Um, and then my last year, which was obviously the big grind. Now, for you that don't know, if you want to start a be a golf coach, basically, in the UK, you have to do your PJ degree. Um, there's a minimum of playing requirement, which means that you have to um, have a handicap of four or below. So that was my big goal. For three years, I was just grinding to get my handicap down to four or below because um, it was this massive mountain that I just needed to climb. I just needed to get there because I knew that if I could get onto the course and do all the coaching, do all the studying, then I've actually got a career in golf for the rest of my life um, as a basis which I was just so excited for. So years of blood, sweat and tears, and obviously a lot of help from Matt, got me finally down to, I think I finally finished or turned pro off a handicap of three, and I just got in just as the course started, my degree started in October. Um, and I was just so excited, I was so ready to learn, obviously um, play a few professional tournaments and just get my degree and start coaching really, just start building a base for my uh, my career and my job. And that allowed me to do that. 
So a year after I finally qualified, I changed jobs to Sanford because I wanted to do a bit more coaching um, and Sanford provided a lot more scope for me to do that. I teach um, and when I first came here, which I still do at the moment, majority of the focus was on the junior coaching um, and that's what I pretty much do now, especially with a lot of my academy stuff. do teach quite a few adults as well, but at the start it was mainly all about junior coaching. And coaching has definitely helped me as a player, just understanding um, just different ways to play the game. It doesn't all have to be the same. I was very much, in my early days, very aesthetically, technically um, motivated when it came to coaching. And I really realised that at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how you get in the hole, as long as you do it in a consistent and repeatable way. So, moved to Sanford, and um, the playing took a bit of a backburn. Um, I really... Especially when I moved to Sanford, me and Mary were looking to move out. I was studying a lot, um, and I'm just going to make loads of excuses, even though I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> um, but yeah, the playing didn't necessarily. I was playing my minimum requirement at tournaments a year, just grinding through them, just obviously so I could keep passing each year to do the courses. But the scoring, as you saw, obviously I showed you a few video back, weren't that great at all. Um, but saying that, I think the early stages of my um, getting down to three and obviously doing my playing ability, which obviously I struggled with at the start, um, really has given me a good background and a good base to lift off from now, really. I feel technically I'm a lot better than I ever have been. Mentally, I still need a lot of work. Um, just because that's what I really feel I missed when I was missed out on the junior years and when I say that when you like grow up say you started playing golf when you were 10 <clears throat> you were playing a few medals competitions on the weekends for example playing games with your mates when you're 13 14 um, and it's that experience of playing different golf courses I think I've missed so it's taken me a good I don't know two years three years to a get comfortable playing other golf courses and b playing with other people as well um, and C, just making sure that um, I'm keeping level-headed and keeping to my game plan and sticking to it um, when I'm at, in a different environment that isn't necessarily comfortable. So that's kind of where I am now. That's how I got there. There's by no means any reason, if you haven't taken this game up yet, there's no reasons why you can't be good at it. Um, I'm hoping that I'm going to be living proof of that. I want to show that you don't necessarily have to go um, through the ABC route. I want to make, see if how far can I go from now, um, obviously with my backstory, starting the game quite late, having a full time job um, and that can you actually be successful enough to uh, play the game and obviously earn money from the game from playing it and I'm really excited, I'm really looking forward to it because um, just the prospect just excites me really. I feel like the six months that I have been practicing really hard now and obviously been doing the videos with you guys, it's just made a massive difference to my game already. Um, and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen for the rest of the year. So the golf wise in the background has been pretty boring. Nine pars, I kind of ruined it, but yeah, nine pars. Um, uh, Odds and sorts. I mean, there's bits of game that are good, bit of the game that still need a bit of work on. But if I could just shoot a boring level par round last year, I think I would have been over the moon. So we're obviously doing something right. Okay, guys, there you have it. God knows what I rambled on about the past ten minutes, um, but I'm sure it gave you a bit of idea of what I've done, where I am now, and I hopefully where I want to go in the future. Um, really excited to obviously go and play my old golf club tomorrow. See if I can post a half decent score around there. Um, parts of my game, yeah, there's some good bits and bad bits in all of it. I think the wedges, obviously club face is a bit closed. I think I missed all the flags left today. Um, but strike was good, strategy was good. Uh, driver, yeah, there were some good ones in there. There was a few ropey ones. So overall, all, the game is doing okay for this time of year really looking forward to obviously a bit more light so obviously i can do a lot more of these like evening vlogs which obviously the course is dead so it gives me freedom to do whatever i like so yeah there we go guys thank you ever so much for watching as always please subscribe and i will catch you guys later